Hello electrified Audi fans or DIY electrified Audi fans. Welcome back to the workshop. I'm not going to waffle too much uh, this time because I've got a rake of um, footage to, to show. Even though I was technically on holidays, um, I was still pottering along here and I just amassed a load of footage which I was that I just took when I was um, doing battery work, battery box work plumbing and just other various bits and pieces I didn't realize but um, it's been a while since I showed the last video of the first roll and I took a bit of time off and uh, but now I'm back at it and the last couple of days I've spent a few long days nearly just getting where I am today um, this morning uh, like I took a lot of stuff out put a lot of back in just to get everything painted up looking good so when I can start putting things back in we're already closer to doing a proper roll above 15 kilometers an hour so uh, without further ado we'll go straight to the first batch of um, footage and uh, we'll talk about what's next later okay it's been a few days of not doing a very lot but so to get back into it again um, the way we left it was we were going to um, wanted to start getting the battery in, so battery boxes uh, and where to put them. So what we have is we already had in this uh, using the old mountings for the rad. There is a bar now across there, and then if I put you over here. What I've been doing then is just fabricating another bar to go across to catch the other batteries. So what we have here is one side going on the main two rails that come up either side of the engine bay. Here's one here made up of, yeah, not great welding, but good enough. That's the other side. So this goes in like so down. We can we've already put in fittings into the uh, into the chassis rails. It's gonna be three bolts on each side. There were M8s in there. What I did was well, actually drilled out. I drilled them out and um, swapped them for M10 fittings, so they could take the extra bit of weight. There we go. Two rails, so the battery box will then sit on those. A battery is very big. Let's give you an idea. That's where they're going to sit in their box. So, um, the box ideally will come out to about probably about um, let's see, 10 mil past that, just about there. Okay, I'm gonna be making the boxes out of, I didn't have time to um, wait for the local guys to do up um, aluminium boxes. Everyone is just flat out at the moment, it's busy. So they were talking about weeks. So I said, right, I'll make them up out of um, 30 by 30 by three um, angle. Make the boxes up, the main frame out of that. And then sheet the internals of them in uh, some uh, aluminium. Okay, a lot of rejigging going on about the last day. I've just had to drop it by 20 mil or so, just so we've got lovely, plenty of clearance here for this extra, just bonnet release cables and stuff like that. So there's no clashing um, or anything like that. And it wasn't too bad. Just had to do there was. Um, kind of do a drop it, do an angle, angle up, angle across. Also just made a new plate here, a lot tidier than the other piece of rubbish I did. Same over there. Put your seat in there. So that's against the uh, other chassis rail. And what I'm going to do here is use these um, radiator points. Um, we're going to put tabs on the edge of the, the box here just to catch those. So if we take this, that sits down like so. Let's 
So when that slam panel is in, it leaves plenty of room there. Plenty of room for the batteries in there. Let's keep welding. More messing with the box. It's now fully secured. Well, we fully secured, haven't locked it in position yet. But we've got our front and back bolts put in. We've got the cross member done. That's all bolted down. We're pretty much at the point where we're gonna give it a clean down, clean those ugly welds and um, coat it, co um, paint it up. So it doesn't rust. It's gonna get the full force of everything coming up the front. Um, but yeah, so what we're gonna do as well is start to plate out the sides with the sheet aluminium. Um, I have to cut out a notch here and here. So when it comes to time, put the battery modules in and you can just sort of slide them down. So put them aside, you can slide them in. It's the right width, including the insulated material which I'm gonna use. Um, I have these measured up to within a couple of mils. So it should be a nice snug um, fit in there. The battery box I've seen, some are pretty much, you squeeze all the modules in there, either bolt it up and bolt it and put into the uh, the box. Some I've seen are insulated and I've gone down the insulated um, way and through a bit of um, research in the camping side of things, I've uh, gone with a, I'll show you. A, magnif a magnificent um, piece of kit. The um, 1499 Regatta Outdoors. Ideal for camping, backpacking and trekking and battery boxes. This is a Napa foam mat they sell for 1499. It's uh, made with EVA foam. EVA foam is a good dense um, material. Its thermal properties are it can happily insulate between heat and cold between minus 30 and plus 80 degrees C. And this is used for a load of different uh, jobs across every industry, as well as the camping. And I found this stuff is actually perfect. Give some light there. This really, it's a lovely dense foam um, and it's perfect for just taking out the irregularities um, of when I'm packing everything in there. Also keeping the batteries from getting too cold. Not that it's gonna get too cold in a temperate climate like Ireland, but you know what I mean? And also from a heat point of view on our blistering summers that we get. So um, I'm going to, this is, a, I got another one as well. So I spent the grand sum of nearly 30 euros on uh, getting these. And um, yeah, it's funny. Try to get these a couple of years ago. You could get that you were swimming in them. These days, they're very difficult to get. Well, primarily because everyone's decided to have a staycation this year and go camping. It's tents, roll mats, sleeping bags, everything's sold out. But also everyone's moved to um, manufacturing those self-inflating mattresses. They only need a little bit of air. So these have kind of gone out of fashion. So trying to track these down is actually pretty tricky, um, but very happy with the EVA foam. Um, yes. So that's what's going to cushion everything in there. And uh, let's move along. the modules in um, very loosely just to test this I haven't got enough padding up here but they they fit in um, now obviously not bolted up as tight I mean there's still enough room with a push and shove you could get that final module in right but that's not good enough um, I can already see like this is not perfectly perpendicular particular it's the modules are sitting it's not a simple case of just sliding them in moving them aside 
they need to be at a fixed distance because if you take a look at this and take a look at the distance between the modules some are fine but some like when you start getting spaced out the distance is too great and things do not work well so you want to get the actual distance the, the specific distance that's like in the um that's in the rear pack between them i have it measured at whatever it was 68 or something so it's like okay if i can't do it this way what can i do next right i've already cut this notch out here okay so what i think i'm going to do is uh, it's going to be the original plan was to have them in one full assembled brick with the threaded rod in them squeezed together as Nissan uh, wanted them to be and then just being able to slot them in without going in with the foam surround as well. And the only way to do that is to cut back this flange here um, which I'm thinking will it deform? it a bit but then i was thinking look at the other battery boxes that are made and they're usually made out of plate right and you never see those deforming everything once you've got your structure your main structure together of the cube it shouldn't start wobbling around um and this is like uh, i think this is three three mil look at this yeah that's three mil angle so what i will do is especially when the, the sides are in it, everything's bonded together. It's a fairly rigid box. So I think what I'm gonna do is, take up here for a look. I will take it all back as if it's a, one of those boxes you see built with two mil. And then, so it's, everything can go straight in in one brick making use of like like with this one here using the threaded bar to squeeze them all together as they should be um, and then they can all go in and then we can put a top on it i think that's the easiest thing to do there comments on a postcard whether well, you know i think it's a good idea but i think that's the way it's going to be i'm thinking for serviceability as well later on down the line it's so much easier um that brings into question when they're in there that's fine how are you gonna get them out you look at this pack i know these are different modules they're not the same they don't they have slight differences in them but they have these plates in them so if i was to put say two three two plates three plates Say so one here, one at either side, one in the middle. I'm putting one here, 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 accessible. Then, even when this is laid on its side on the bench, I'll be able to pull either leaving it in the car, being able to jack it up, um, or on the bench on its side, pulling them out. A bit of painting here today. Nice. See, cut those back. Bit of that. Bit of this. And now, I'm going to start building this battery. Okay, that's all um, tightened up now. 
we got the uh, we kept the measurements as the same as uh, the block here and it, it actually when you start tightening up on the threaded bar actually as soon as you get down to the 680 mil it actually just it's like the chassis of each module just sort of get to that point you can't go any further so uh, but cross checking it um, from end to end not taking into account the the, the what you call it plate I put in there it's 680 mil so that matches what's what's there um, it's good so I'll give you a quick look so there you go there's the 20 modules nicely in there I just could use to reuse the old plate here and there which has two mounting points at either end so I can actually use the if I wanted to you could use the crane <laughs> if I wanted to I will be doing that uh, well alternatively you could, you could actually just put the box on its side and you can slide them in so yeah I've got another options I think it's more for when I was going to um, have to take the batteries out if for any reason down the line um, then I just had two points that I could anchor the um, battery box to anchor points and lift them up so what we'll do is I'm just going to wait for the um, the boxes, the, the frame there to dry then I'm going to put in the sides, bottom uh, the aluminium plate fix those, bond those into place and um, paint it all black plus the subframe of it and stick it in the car hmm change your plan um when i did the measurements for the box i kind of gave myself like 20 mil and all that here there leeway but um i thought i was going to reuse these plates i didn't factor them into the measurements and all that so the result is with using the plates at either end it was gonna be very very tight probably too tight so um did was i've just strapped up the packs so i didn't expand again chipped these out of the way and i'm just putting on these here again loads of nuts and bolts and everything from the uh from the leaf pack so these are nice they've kind of got an inbuilt washer on them as well so what i'm doing is i'm just spinning off all the old ones this will give a good bit of coverage on each of the holes and um, should hold everything in place not should will we must undo what we made <laughs> um yeah after the uh the paint job here it's like right let's just take everything out and do a proper job so yeah just spent the last 10 minutes disassembling of that quite happy with it actually comes out quite well um a bit jacked up there temporarily so i'll review all my wells grind down smugliness and paint her all up and hopefully get that all back in tomorrow next job after that is then figuring out the bms figuring out all this stuff how that's all gonna wire up on top of this and lest we forget the big pack that goes in the back and how that's gonna go in it'll go in just how it's going in i don't know yet had an engineer look at overlook the top to front to back there um a couple of weeks ago very happy with the progress very like he was he said yeah yeah you only had one or two minor um comments on it that i've already rectified it was uh down to some uh questionable welding which i was going to replace anyway it's temporary so um yeah he was happy and then i asked him about um relieving a bit of, like making a bit of space in that spare wheel well just to fit that pack in and he's like yeah no it's no problem what i wanted to do he said he was happy with so uh, once it's put back in once the 
the bit that you cut out is sort of put back in place and sealed obviously that's all good so uh, it's all coming along because uh, once i get all the the inverter back in all that i'll get all the plumbing actually yeah um i i ditched the um where's it going i ditched this i don't know if i mentioned before i ditched the um the leaf uh water pump because it's a bit too complicated for what i need um a lot of regulation in it and all that as in it's not just your usual 12 volts there's pwm signaling and all that in it for there's two of those pumps in the, the car and they're all regulated from an ecu and i was like right i don't want the complication i could do it but i decided no uh, i'll go with again something that's used quite a lot of people is it's this fella it's um it's just a simple 12 volt pump which is used in a lot of mercedes in the ml classes in the veto vans um all across the board i think it must be used by other um oems as well but it's a very handy piece of kit 20 quid um sure i got two of them to hell so uh yeah so have that i can start putting the plumbing back in and uh where i fit the radiator don't know um no i do know i do know it's going to sit, I won't show you now because it's a bit, won't make any sense uh, until I put the um, cross beam in and the battery box, but it'll sit just underneath and it'll have whatever airflow it needs. It doesn't need a lot of airflow, but it'll have airflow coming in from here. It just, it really doesn't need a lot. Um, that's it, so it kind of sit in behind there, which is pretty cool. Um, that's, that's kind of, it for the moment um not a lot else going on just a lot of fabrication and figuring out batteries and buying camping equipment okay we did a nice job priming painting everything up all engine mounts lovely 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 so let's get them back in the car Now we're getting somewhere, okay. All looking nice and tidy. All around there. All those back in, all nicely bolted up. It's all in now, three phases in. So uh, what I did, what I wanted to finish off the last time, but I stopped because I wanted to get all this metal work, black work done was uh, get the rest of the, the coolant system in. So at the moment what I have is, that's obviously coming in, it's going into the inverter, it loops out the back, down into the motor, and then pops out here into this uh, Mercedes ML, uh, Vito, whatever it is, Bosch motor here. And from there, we're going to bring it down into the rad and do a loop back up and think about whether or not I'm going to use that um, little thing that I had. Then decide whether or not to use this, uh, which I had in my original design where I was going to do a summer winter kind of loop. Um, so during winter time, 
I just have the um, the coolant going directly back through the uh, heater matrix in the car for demisting and all that. Whether or not it's going to work, I don't think so. But it's to have it in there. Um, this thing, I'll toy up whether I'm going to put it in or not. Um, but this will mean that I can bring, here's your input, and then you have your two outputs. One goes just all the time directly to the heater matrix, or then during summertime, it's not atomic, it's not really going to happen, but you can send it through the main rad and back through the system. So, yeah, I'll have a tinker with that. Instead of a Range Rover, BMW, BMW part. It's a big Audi, Volkswagen Audi have a single solenoid one, which is Lahandier. This is kind of, yeah. It's a bit much but for what I need, but we'll see how it works. Radiator update. So bracket fixed in here. I'm going to weld that. This is going to have in, out. It's going to nicely fit down here. Good bracket fitted there. Sit in like that. Left hand bracket. Found these bits of. Stainless, that goes there, that goes there, and it's all bolted up, it'll be nice. It's just there, it's all bolted up, it'll be all good. In. Underneath. And there we go. They're all bolted down. It's good and solid there. There's no welding. My welding is improving. So just wipe that to cool down, clean it up, give it another spray with some paint. So that's good and solid. So we're gonna have the pump will um, feed into the top over here. And then the bottom will retrace its steps back up. So with that, the battery box will go up here but there'll be enough airflow. There'll be an airflow coming in from here underneath as well. So it's not gonna get that hot. Just need to have somewhere to, for it to expel its air. If we need to, we can direct a bit more air in here using a duct, but I don't see that being an issue. Okay, I think that's pretty much in now. Um, we'll run through from top to bottom. Uh, well, let's go from the motor. So, out of the motor, through the uh, pump. So it comes in, and it, uh, put that down there. Goes in the top of the rad. As well as that, we've got the, um, the tank goes up, that'll be at the top there. It's the uh, overflow. Then, comes out the bottom of the um, rad. You've got the, coming from the tank there, that comes down and feeds into there. So we go underneath, you see it? Comes out from the rad and goes up, up around the back, goes into the heater matrix at the moment. I might bypass that, we'll see how it goes. Goes around down into the inverter, out of the back of the inverter, then into the top of the motor, and back around. I've reused all the old leaf uh, coolant pipe, so it's got lots of nice bits and pieces on it, like the um, protection and all that, so, yep, pretty happy with that. I'll fill it up and give it a run later on, so aside from that, yeah. The rad is, it's it's okay in there. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna make a bracket here, just to catch that, just to take out that that lateral movement. But um, that's it. I just want to get out of the way before I put the um, battery pack in and start working with that. In the meantime, I took a bit of five minutes and started uh, doing the BMS rewiring on the small four pack before I start doing that. So 
that was a that was a uh, an escapade that was but uh, glad it's all done now what is next what is next battery high voltage junction box getting all that in I'm wired up let's keep cracking on take two yep I am um, took the liberty of um, disassembling everything again I wasn't happy with what I'd done the way I bonded the walls and this together I used some epoxy polyurethane rubbish and it wasn't up for the job so um, what I did was battery out actually found another novel way of taking the battery out I didn't have to worry about lugs and lifting it out I just turned it on its head lifted the box off perfect yeah lifting it on its head making sure that the terminals were on resting on that uh, special camping foam I got so nothing's damaged um, yeah so took it all apart cleaned all the seals again and then got some proper seam sealer from the local auto place and um, so good that this it's absolutely there's no English on it at all there's Czech Greek Polish Russian the lot so it's obviously a 3M knockoff and if they can reverse engineer what 3M do, all good. So um, that's what I've done here. Gone and completely sealed. And I know this stuff it will do the job. You can get that stuff, you know, that tiger seal. Uh, but I've used it on that before, this fella. Um, and I found it goes hard. So after a time, if there's any flex in the bodywork, that it just opens up... Um, gaps so water ingress can occur but with this stuff they wanted to get this stuff because it stays sort of malleable and uh that's what i've done there so good let that all set and then we'll get the battery back in and plonk it back in there battery back in this box box filling tar that's the car. Probably can't see because it's hidden behind. That's it. Lovely. So yeah, so that was a good few um, days, solid work. Good few long days to to get to here. So it's really it's brilliant to have the car back down on all fours with a ride height that actually looks pretty much as it should be. Um, yeah, we're really close. To getting the full pack in small pack over there large pack in wire it all up get it rolling um, next job here is apart from making that small pack for this is getting the, um, the all the bus bars and the BMS the battery management system all wired up correctly so very quickly what that involves is uh, of the the 24 24 um, modules they all came like this so if you remember way back in the videos you had uh, packs that lay on either side of the um, the the battery box the big battery box that was in the leaf and you had you had two here two here four four here four there on either side basically in my crude sketch here that was what it was like you had the big pack back there then you had four here eight eight and four so what I've had to do is I've had to kind of reuse, um, I want to reuse um, all the old um, bus bars and BMS wiring that is in here. So to do that, because I'm doing it in a different configuration, I had to sort of pick apart all this and reassemble it. So to start, because I'm going to be laying it out like this, I'm going to have four and 20 like this. So I've started off with the first four. So I've kind of disassembled one of these. You can see it here. So I've disassembled and rearranged. So it's going to be like this. So you'll have uh, coming in 
the positive coming in here and go across then a bus bar will come in here drop it to there bus bar down to there down there and it'll come out here it'll come out from there and it'll go into the start of that pack and that's what i'm doing here right now i'm starting this new pack here so it'll come in go like this all the way along and then i'm gonna to have to disassemble all this and recreate the rest of the ribbon along there making sure that all the bms wires sort of follow the same uh, pattern as they did in the original so confused yes uh you're allowed to be <laughs> but it's uh once you get your head once you get stuck into it it starts to it starts to work itself out so it's not too bad um i've done sort of half of it pretty much already so to this is the most straightforward bit that i want to do the tricky bit first was having the separate uh four pack there and then going into the other one um so yeah so that's what i'm going to do I'll probably potter along through that tomorrow then i can lay it out in there get this battery box done in that uh, in the other side of the car and then sort out this fella here the big box in the back so that's it um that's where we are we've made very good progress we me made very good progress um good push this week after my holliers um so it's um it's very much coming together and uh looking forward to being able to get it rolling properly um so we will work on all this stuff next couple of days and um yeah so hopefully next time next video won't be so late uh releasing the next one uh hopefully we'll be rolling and um we can go for a proper drive but um, once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share, like, spread around to other like-minded or not like-minded folk, or just send it on to people so you can annoy them. Or you can play it at night, might send you off to sleep. Um, so yeah, whatever works, I'm happy. And uh, we'll see you next time for a spin. All right. Thanks.